Hello everybody, Shrouded Hand here and I've got a gruesome dose of horror for you today, so let's just get straight into it. In late November 2009, a Peruvian chief of police and his men called an urgent press conference. They seated themselves around a green table, laid out on it were bones, dynamite and two bottles of a yellowy orange liquid, plus several photos of dismembered bodies amongst dense foliage. They told an astonishing tale of murders, guns, drugs and an underground traffic in human fat. The name of the gang was the Pistacos. Earlier that month, members of the Pistacos had been apprehended at a bus station in Lima, Peru. These men were already wanted by the police with counts of illegal firearm possession and drug trafficking. Following a search of their belongings, however, police were puzzled to find these two bottles of the yellowy orange substance. And as you've probably guessed, inside these bottles was human fat. During the press conference, the chief of police said that the fat was extracted from the thorax and thighs. They then displayed several more grim images, bones that showed evidence of burning and the severed rotting head of a 27 year old man. It emerged that the police had received a tip that there was a growing trade in human fat on the black markets and this grisly evidence was the proof. During interviews the gang told a gruesome story. The fat was destined for use in the cosmetics trade some of it internationally shipped as far as Europe. The two that were arrested claimed that the fat was worth up to $36,000 a gallon and that they operated in the remote jungle region of Wanuku, with over 60 people reported missing in the area and countless more potentially going unreported, this was not a surprise to the local police. The captured men went into great detail about how the fat was rendered. The victims would be disemboweled before their heads and limbs removed. Then the torso, arms, legs and heads were hung over a fire, slowly warming the flesh until the fat ran drop by drop into tubs below. They also claimed that their gang was only one of many taking part in this gory business. But here's the thing about this Pish Taco gang. Most likely they didn't really exist at all. It turns out there was another story brewing in the press. Evidence was emerging that this particular police force had carried out over 45 illegal killings of criminals in the last two years. The police chief that held the press conference was eventually suspended. It's thought that he invented the story to create a sort of false scandal, a media furore that would distract away from his own police force's wrongdoings. The area in which they operate has a lot of drug trafficking gangs and naturally people do go missing and it was probably quite easy for them to find a body to pose as a victim of the Pishtaco fat stealing gang. But there is a reason why this story resonated with the local people. You see, this idea of the Pishtaco isn't a new one, in fact it's been around for hundreds of years. The name Pishtaco comes from the Quechua word Pishte, which means to rip or shred into pieces. In fact, the Pishtaco is known by many names across South America. The Nakak, the Butcher, the Karisiri, the one who cuts with a knife. In southern Bolivia, he is known as Likichiri, Fat Remover, Degolador, the Slaughterer. These are all variations on a very similar theme. Fat to the Andean natives was and still is a powerful spiritual item and was often offered to their deities in religious ceremonies. Amongst the indigenous peoples, fat can be used to make various medicines. Even the Incan creator god Viracocha is named after the substance. His name literally translates into fat of the sea. The earliest written reference to the Pishtaco comes from the Spanish priest Cristobal de Molina. 
In 1574, he collaborated on the task of rooting out and destroying non-Christian idols and shrines that belonged to the natives and punishing their worshippers. He also catalogued the history, folklore, ceremonies and the magical rites of the indigenous people of the Southern Andes. His works are amongst the only early written documents of the people of that region from the time of the Spanish conquest. In one of his journals he notes that certain indigenous Andeans refused to bring them firewood when asked. This wasn't out of anger or resentment to the Spanish conquistadors, but from pure fear. When questioned, the natives revealed that around 50 years previously, witnesses had seen Spanish soldiers slicing flesh from the bodies of native warriors. The frightened people told him that the men had been butchered and their flesh was boiled down and used by the Spanish to make potions. And they weren't wrong, there are several written accounts of the conquistadors using such human fat for all kinds of purposes, from treating wounds to keeping their armour and guns from rusting in the dense rainforests. As Demolina notes, it was held and believed by the Indians that Spain had sent to this kingdom, Peru, for the fat of the Indians to cure a certain sickness for which there was no other cure than the aforesaid fat. It's no surprise then that the native people feared the priests who often acted as doctors and healers to the wounded conquistadors. They were probably the ones who made some of these grisly medicines. Two hundred years later, and these stories had become myth. Noted in the journals of a group of priests from Cusco in Peru, there was a widely held belief that the Pistacos supplied Greece to the Christian churches to oil their bells. According to the legends, this is how the bells were able to produce that peculiar ringing which summoned people to worship. By the time that the last Inca was slain in the 1570s, between 50 and 90% of all indigenous people in that region had been killed. The legends of the Pishtaco continued, however, and they still exist today. Many say that the Pishtaco haunts the jungles of South America, killing the careless and the unwary. Similar to the black dog legends in European folklore, his victims are the foolish and the naive those who stray from the path and walk alone in dark places. The Pishtarko is known to disorientate his victims with magic powders made from ground human bones, or he hypnotises them with his snake-like fingers. After killing his prey with a slash to the throat, the bodies are beheaded and spirited away to caves or abandoned dwellings to be drained of their fat before being dumped. Women sometimes are kept alive and hypnotised into becoming his slave. Tales from the 1950s describe Pishtakos who take women from their villages and transform them into lovers and domestic servants. Sometimes the women would have their legs and arms amputated to prevent them from escaping. Unlike other cryptids, this Pishtako character isn't immortal, they can be fought and killed just like any human. Over the years, there have been countless killings or attempted killings of people suspected of being Pishtakos. For example, in 1989, three French citizens and a Peruvian were shot and killed whilst crossing the territory of the Agrana natives. They'd been using a raft to film a video of their journey and whilst the killers were never caught, it's rumoured that the natives believed that the camera was some kind of pish taco device that could drain the fat from whoever it was pointed at. The death of a tourist in 2002 and the killing of two Polish kayakers in 2011 are also said to be caused by them being branded pish tacos. In 2016, two suspected Pishtakos, rumoured to be kidnapping children, were held by local police. A mob of people attempted to storm the police station, and whilst they were unsuccessful, the fury of their attacks left one dead and 16 injured. The death of Sebastian Woodroff in 2018 is another notorious case. 
Over a period of months, Sebastian had consumed ayahuasca multiple times and his behaviour started to change. His actions became bizarre, often violent. Locals began to refer to him as the Pistaco or the Pelacara, the face peeler, which is another South American cryptid. His strange behaviour reached a peak when one night he shot and killed a Peruvian shaman. The outrage caused by the shooting led to Sebastian being beaten to a bloody pulp by a mob before a car seat belt was tied around his neck and he was dragged through the jungle and lynched. And his final moments were recorded. There is a video of Sebastian Woodruff's death if you choose to find it. The Pish Taco is often described as a pale-skinned foreigner, an outsider, appearing out of the ordinary to everyone else. A hundred years ago, arriving unannounced in a village on horseback or wearing unusual clothes could get you branded as a pish taco. Today it could be owning a powerful car or modern gadgets. Over the years, the reason why the pish taco has harvested human fat has changed. Whilst at first the fat was thought to cure the Spanish soldiers of some unknown disease or greased church bells, later the fat was believed to power the machines of industry. Even later the fat was thought to power the planes that flew over the jungles. Nowadays the pistaco is believed to sell the fat to the government who use it to pay off their national debts and support huge foreign loans that prop up the country's economies. The legend of the Pish Taco is a complicated one. To a large number of people in that region, the Pish Taco is a completely real threat, a natural creature that haunts the jungles. But the Pish Taco can also be a metaphor, a symbol of the threat posed by the modern world that brings unwelcome change. Whether he's a Spanish conquistador, a factory owner, big business, or a GoPro clad tourist. I heard the story about the gang of fat smugglers I got interested and as I researched it, it sort of went into a different direction about folklore and creepy stories. The idea that a gang is killing people and harvesting their fat to sell to big cosmetic companies abroad, it doesn't really make sense. Fat, once it's removed from the body, doesn't last that long. Within 30 minutes it starts to decay. Plus, if the cosmetic industry really wanted a cheap source of human fat, then surely it'd be easier to get it from places that do liposuction rather than resorting to a Peruvian gang of murderers. So, I hope you find it interesting, and thank you for watching. A big thank you, as always, to the patrons who are supporting the channel. Thank you very much. I hope I can get back to making some regular content now that I'm done with surgery and I'm back at my computer. <laughs> okay, until next time, goodbye. Pish taco. 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 Peace take Peace take Peace take Fish taco. Fish taco.